Only this percentage of people who watch are subscribed. So subscribe now and never miss out. Enjoy the video. We have been absolutely overrun with mail. We, we, we had more than we could possibly open. It's definitely not that we were working on Giganotosaurus and kept pushing back the mailbag for like four months now. But uh, we're gonna open stuff. Starting with this. I did not see the most recent Jurassic World. What, was there a Dreadnoughtus in the movie? Or is this just... It's the Jurassic Park franchise, so we gotta have dinosaur toys. Jeez. This is the part where I have to admit I don't know a lot about Dreadnoughtus. I know it's an objectively cool name for a dinosaur. Oh. That's neat. This is definitely giving that giant Brachiosaurus we have a run for its money. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Look at that lower lip! That's... I don't know if that's based on anything. That might just be so that it closes its mouth nice and neat. I guess that's possible. I don't. <laughs> 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 that takes a substantial amount of force to actually. Oh, is that as far as it goes? I guess that's as far as it goes. Like. I realize they couldn't have put more articulation in the neck because then you've got more things that can fail. This is enormous. Appropriately, but still. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Is that- I think the front feet are wrong, aren't they? Like, being a giant sauropod, it, it would have, like, the, uh... The more ungular grade feet with the, like... I, I, I don't- again, I don't know much about Dreadnoughtus, but wouldn't it only have, like, one nail, if that? And wouldn't the legs be proportionally kind of... well, I guess... I guess the front legs are proportionally not, not too, uh, wide, but... Oh! I knocked over almost an entire shelf. You're wrecking the place, Michael. What? It's like a little... DNA code, I guess? I should have read the instructions. There are no instructions. Okay, never mind. It's got the nostrils up on top of the head, too. Kind of a classic mistake. I don't know... Dreadnoughtus. I feel like this would be one of the ones that has a more... like, Diplodocus-looking head, where it's a little bit longer and narrower, but I do not recall. Whereas this looks more like a turtle. It's weird that you... there's no... Yeah. 
There's no way to elevate or lower the neck in front of the, where it meets the torso. Mm. It's a poster, I think. Yeah. The packing slip, but no note. It is indeed a poster. Oh. Okay, it's artwork of a of a stegosaurus on a ginkgo leaf. Very stylized stegosaurus. That's cute. No name though. I think this is from the same person. Again, no note that, yeah, it must be, because here we've got a similar artwork. Also on a ginkgo leaf, this time a ceratopsid. Triceratops, I presume. See, you should vary the plant to reflect the plants of the different time periods, but I, well, I mean, ginkgos are safe. Ginkgos are immortal. Ginkgos will be here long after we're gone. This one says fragile. Oh! Oh, yep. So we've got three pieces of art from this person. This one is a mug with a dromaeosaurid of some kind. It's probably cold, because all of its feathers have fallen out. I wish I knew anything about who had sent these, but, um, thank you, I, I presume, Sarah? Unless that's just the person who shipped them. This one's from... I think it's drop-shipped, actually. It's made by something called Because Science. Ooh! This is cool! It's a little, uh... I don't know what, either laser cut or, or like, routered circuit board in the shape of a dinosaur. That's cute. It's, it's a cartoon, so I'm not going to be too harsh about it. You know, there's no note. I don't know who sent this. Unless it was from Because Science. But thank you, whoever you are. That's, that's cute. I like that the little... I don't know anything about electronics. I like that the little silver part there is right where its heart would be. There we go. This is from Canada. Beyond that, I have nothing. Oh, there is correspondence. Ahem. <clears throat> Hello and thank you to Liz and Steven. I don't remember how I discovered your dinosaur. I don't remember how I discovered your dinosaurs are wrong. I think I was hunting for information on Tarbosaurus and its possible relationship to Zhusheng Tyrannus, or maybe just one during one of my nights of letting the YouTube algorithm coast around after watching a few Eons episodes. I was amazed I hadn't heard of it before, to be honest. I've been an obsessive fan of paleontology-related content for a long while now. I've loved dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. Huge fan of the Permian therapsids like Inostras, oh my goodness, Inostrancevia and other Gorgonopsids, and I've really enjoyed watching your show. You're really far more up to date on current research than I am, and it's been really helpful to me to keep caught up. Um, and my wife Julian and I watch it quite frequently. We joined your Patreon, oh thank you, uh, because we really wanted to make sure you can keep doing these shows. It fills a niche about popular conceptions of dinosaurs and the real science still going, that is sorely needed. 
It's also just fun as heck to see an actual video about a Margosaurus or Dilophosaurus, or even more rarely discuss dinosaurs like Herrerasaurus. Your animation and editing makes your episodes really entertaining, plus you're funny. <laughs> well, thank you. Which is great, so many people lose that sense of humor when talking about this subject. Do they? I feel like... You... Eh, well, maybe. Like, it's, it's very easy to get dry about it, but I, I feel like most people who work with these animals at least have that, gee whiz, we're working with dinosaurs kind of a spirit. Um, we're moving and we decided to send you a few of our dinosaurs to potentially use on your show. There's an ankylosaur of some kind. He thinks it was a Jurassic Park toy. I'm not sure which one it was. A ceratopsian that I think is intended to be a triceratops. A really weird therizinosaurus that's featherless and shrink-wrapped for some reason. A plushy stegosaurus, I think. And a recent find, an acrocanthosaurus. Which I wanted to send y'all because I've not seen an acro toy before. Well, we got... I think... You're an acrocanthosaurus, yeah. And you're an Acrocanthosaurus. We got Acrocanthosauruses. Sorry, the plural is also Acrocanthosaurus, Steven. Not to seem ungrateful, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, we got those. Uh, keep up the good work. Your show is one of the most informative, most fun, best edited, and shot paleontology content I've watched on YouTube. Sincerely, Matthew and Julian. Well, thank you. That was very kind of you. Didn't mention why there's d dog grooming tools mixed in. I guess we'll use them. We, we have a dog who has decided that everything in the environment needs to be covered in his shed hairs right now, because it's spring. What? It's a, it's a Tyrannosaurus, clearly, but it's, I, I assume it, it walks if you wind it up. And I assumed wrong. Is it like a catch? Oh, you have to have something jammed in. Okay. I can work with that. Oh, I'm gonna make this walk, Liz. Well, that's disappointing. We talked about the gate of Tyrannosaurus before. I think in one of the Paleo Rewinds. Um, not like that. They, uh, they didn't walk like that. <laughs> Got another Tyrannosaurus skeleton, I presume. What? What the blazes is going on here? It's, it's articulated somehow. But they... That is... that is ridiculous. Look at how they did the shoulder. It's... The... the shoulder is here. But they took the scapula and, and put the end of it as a... as a ball joint. I have never seen that kind of articulation on a dinosaur toy. It's like it's a... Maybe... maybe that's what it is. Maybe this was repurposed from a bird torso because like that's where you would expect the wings to start oh that's weird it's neat that you can bend it though that's oh oh see it doesn't have enough tail or wait it's got three fingers it's got a tyrannosaur head clearly but then three fingered hands some kind of some kind of Atavism.
Oh, wow. That definitely looks like an, ac an Acrocanthosaurus. It's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice Acrocanthosaurus. We just talked about Giganotosaurus, so like pretty much everything I talked about in there also more or less applies to Acro, but um, as far as I know, the, the like sail-like back is not too reasonable. Like I, I don't know to what extent the the like upper works of the neural spines would um would even be apparent from the outside because there's this complex of muscles and ligaments running along the back it's a beautiful sculpt though what is this oh it's papo there's our thyreophorin i i guess that could be a stegosaurus but there's it's, it's, um, it's stylized enough that you could, like, call this anything you like. Oh, hey. I think we have one that looks like this. This is a, yeah, it's an Allosaurus. I, I, I think we've been sent one similar to this. With the, the really wide head with the very tall, um, lacrimal and nasal adornments. Some kind of... wow, okay. So based on the head, I would assume this is a Tyrannosaur again, but it's got these feathers on its arms, which tell me that it's supposed to be... Well, that could be a Tyrannosaur, since they're derived Solurosaurs. But the overall quality of the toy tells me they might not be aware that all derived Solurosaurs would be ancestrally fuzzy. I don't know what that's meant to be. Maybe like a... Oh, it's labeled. It's labeled, but it doesn't have a name. It's made by Schleich. I might have known. Hey, here's the Ankylosaur. Oh, that's kind of cool. You don't get them with uh, articulated limbs too much. Oh, the poor thing had an injury. What? Okay, okay. well, they weren't turtles. <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't retract their neck into their body. At least not any more than you or I can. That's frustrating, because I kind of like the hands and feet otherwise. I, I think it doesn't have the right number of nails, but that's all right. There's, there's springs everywhere for no discernible reason. Oh. Hold your head high. Okay, well, close enough. I, th I think it's supposed to be an ankylosaurus. It, it looks like one. Oh, well, I don't know. How am I supposed to know what a poop bag is? I just reuse shopping bags. Hey, that is definitely a Triceratops. I like that it includes the uh, feature scales on the back. Oh no! I dismembered it. Oh, huh. That's... Uh, 
That's an interesting interpretation of a Therizinosaurus. They've got beak and teeth and feathers and a very, like, broad... It's like they tried to go both ways. They tried to have the old-fashioned, um, like, raptor-looking Therizinosaurus, but then they were like, no, no, it's got to have a beak, so they just added a beak. Pronated hands, of course. No, it, it has feathers, including a wimpy little tail fan, but doesn't have feathers on the arms, which is a choice. I like the color scheme. I, I assume that blue is not something we would see on an animal so large, at least not that much of it, but it's pretty. Neat. Yeah, thank you, Matthew and Julian. This appears to have been drop shipped also. Oh! It's a Diplodocus, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Diplodocus, Safari Limited, 2017. This is, I knew it, this is also from Michael. We got, see, any other mailbag, I would be like, wow, this is a really big sauropod, but. <laughs> that is cool. I like how, um, I don't know, how much of a wall it is. It's very long and very narrow. I actually have no, I don't know how reasonable that is for Diplodocus in particular. Like, shouldn't the tor- I mean, I guess we don't necessarily know how much of a, like, flesh envelope would be around the, the torso. Yeah, that's really nice, though. Oh, and the tail flexes. This is also from Michael. Wow, you've been busy. Oh, and there's a note. Dear Stephen and Liz, saw this little mini Lego kit. During a recent trip to the Smithsonian Natural History Museum and thought you might appreciate it. I got one of my own and built it, so this might be good for a chill stream, considering it took me around two to three hours to build. Hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Regards, Michael. Thank you. I hope to visit the Smithsonian Natural History Museum someday. I've been, I've been near it, but I didn't get to go in because it wasn't open the day that I was there. Cool. No return address. I think it was drop shipped anyway. Ooh! Wait a minute. Is this... Is it Acrocanthosaurus Day? <laughs> it's like the third one. This is from... Landon. G Dear your dinosaurs are... Letter R. Wrong. I love the show and hope to see more episodes in the future. Keep the good work going. Thank you. That's a, the, I mean, PS, PNSO always does good work. That is a really nice one. Although, hmm. They, they, they're really adamant about keeping the teeth outside the mouth for some reason. I don't know. They, they might know something I don't. Thank you, Landon. I have no information about this one. Oh, yes I do. I was warned. This, well, um, I, I got a message like, hey, you're getting a Majungasaurus. It's from Michelle. So, <sighs> thank you, Michelle, for the Schleich Majungasaurus. C 
So, this has just a single round conical horn in the middle of the forehead, and I don't know, like, I know Majungasaurus had a, a central horn, but I don't know if it was, like, that perfect. I like the clownfish coloration. I, I assume that's not particularly reasonable, but it looks cool. I think the arms are entirely too long for a Ablosaurid, though. Yes, thank you, Michelle. This is from Charles in California. That. Oh, there's correspondence. Dear, your dinosaurs are wrong. These are the same or very similar to the very first dinosaur toys I had. I found them in a collector's shop recently. I always wanted to send them in, especially the bipedal, in quotes, one. Oh, I get it. Because <laughs> it's not actually bipedal. It's, it's standing on its tail. I... That's kind of neat how it's got such lanky limbs with really long feet, but then really short five toes. <laughs> I'm curious what you think it is. I always called it a Tyrannosaurus growing up, but it looks more like someone told an alligator to impersonate a kangaroo and a praying mantis at the same time. Well, I definitely see the kangaroo part. But yeah, it's got, it's got, like, um, what's that early, like, Archosaura, whatever, Dinosauromorph? Lagopetid. It looks like it could be a really bad Lagopetid. Uh, if you wouldn't mind sending them back when you're done with them, I kind of love them. I, I, I don't blame you. These are, oh. Wait. He included pictures, so I can actually confidently say which one he's talking about. Oh. <laughs> These are adorable. These are counting dinosaurs that I bought for my classroom. I was told I wouldn't be reimbursed for the purchase, so I don't feel too bad about taking them and mailing them to y'all. I realize you don't need any of them, but they're cute, and I thought you might appreciate that. The sauropod is labeled on the box as Brachiosaurus, so I guess you can throw it on the pile when you do a Brachiosaurus episode. Yeah, it's, um, it's upright like a Macronarian would be. Uh, I love the, the very bird-like Pteranodon. That's adorable. It's wrong, but it's very cute. Oh, I had that backwards. That's an Ankylosaurus, obviously. <laughs> Neat. Okay, and then these... were in a prize box for the students who did a good job at another classroom where he works. Again, you don't need, you don't need them except for maybe the Carithosaurus. I... we must have a Carithosaurus by now, right? I think we do, but we don't have a particularly large one. Not that this one is. Uh, but look at them. They're incredible. They are the reason cavemen painted on walls. The Spinosaurus looks like it has half a butterfly wing. Oh, yeah. It, uh, it is a really... It's like a doily up on its back. Oh, what is going on with its face? I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's got, like alien face going on. Uh, keep it real, Chuck. Thank you. So I saved this for last because I, I want to, I want to, one second. Okay, so previously we had this guy, which I believe is a, either a Brontosaurus or a Diplodocus. And then somebody sent us this guy which is almost identical, but just larger. And now Charles 
sends us this guy, which is almost identical, but larger still. I like how the, the level of detail goes up each time, too. Like, this one, you've got... That might just be paint flex, actually. I thought that this one had nobles on it, but... This, this one's got osteoderms, or, or maybe they're just feature scales. But, like, the... The sculpt is extremely similar. Like, maybe they're all just based on the same... Wow! <laughs> no information on who made it, but it... Brontosaurus! <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, that's very nice. Classic. It's classic Brontosaurus. That's our theme so far, is very large sauropod toys. Very large sauropod toys and more Acrocanthosaurus than we need. This is from... Uh, I can't read it. It was written in marker and I, it, it like wore off. Oh, there's correspondence. This, this box is... <laughs> what? You didn't need this much box for that small of a dinosaur. Okay. Oh, it's, it, ju it just says send back to William with his address. Okay, well, thank you, William. This appears to be an Ankylosaurus. Like, it's got that particular, like, squared off spike that you usually see in Ankylosaurus toys. Like, I guess it could be some other animal. I don't know what's going on with that tail, though. It's just like a fin instead of a proper club. Oh, no, it says Ankylosaurus on the belly. Well, there you go. Yes, thank you, William. We're gonna... There we go. Uh... This is from somebody in the UK. I can't tell if their name is Y. Fron, or if that's part of the address. Oh, there's correspondence. If my fingers could work. There we go. Ah, they're Welsh. Hello, my name is Phineas, and I live in... L Oh, Lanon, which I'm probably saying wrong anyway, Wales. This is my Cintosaurus. It looks like a duck pigeon. It does look like a duck pigeon. It has it has a literal duck bill, but then also like the the pigeon sort of nose arrangement. And of course, the um the classic I don't know a polite way to say this. Am I allowed to say phallic? <laughs> Cause that's what that is. We don't restore Cintosaurus this way anymore because it turns out that the that arrangement was of crest was um broken. But this was the way that the head was restored for a period of years. <laughs> Aside from the uh the, this is a weirdly proportioned dinosaur apart from the apart from the head cuz like the look at the the whole front of the animal is like like a different size than you would expect based on the back of the animal. Yeah, that's that is a weird one. Um in my picture the the honk is back words because it is a backwards dinosaur. Please send it back. Thank you. Phineas, age six, nearly seven. Oh, I get it. Okay. He, he wrote honk backwards. I get it. 
do the do the centosaurus. Thank you, Phineas. This is from also from the UK. Somebody named S. There is correspondence with chickens on it. Oh, it's from Spinosaurus, one of our one of our patrons. Uh, hello, Stephen and Liz. I thought I might send you something unusual. It's a collector's 50 pence coin from the Royal Mint's Dinosauria series, where they put pictures of the first three dinosaurs to be discovered on 50 pence coins. Which might reflect poorly on me, but um, what's a pence? Oh! Woo! It's a Hylaeosaurus! That's cool. Or is pence plural and single and singular is pent? No, that, that wouldn't make any sense. The Hylaeosaurus coins are the only ones left now, so I got you one. I have also drawn you some chickens on these sheets of paper. I can see that. Uh, by the time you receive this letter, Giganotosaurus episode shall have been uploaded, so good luck with the next episode. Well, thank you. Uh, I think it would be very interesting if you did a video about the day-to-day -day life of a dinosaur. I keep chickens, and watching them about their daily routines makes me think about how non-avian dinosaurs would have gone about their days and what they would have done every day. Uh, disease in dinosaurs is also an interesting part of paleontology. It's another thing my chickens got me interested in quite recently, as there is currently a mandatory housing order in the UK due to bird flu. Mm. We, we had that here recently. I think it would be great if you could cover disease in dinosaurs at some point. The coin doesn't need to be returned. From your patron, Spinosaurus aegypticus. And, and there are indeed chickens. That's, yeah, like I, I've tried to, as best I can, go into that a little bit, like talking about the um, paleoecology a little more than we used to, you know, comparing the, the animal to its contemporaries and how it might have interacted with them, but a lot of the time there just isn't a lot of information out there, and I, I don't want to be too speculative on that kind of thing, especially since, like, we're more focused on the anatomy, but... As, as a subject, yes, I, I definitely want to talk about disease at some point. Again, though, there's only diseases that would leave marks on the bones or, like, affect its, uh, its nutrition to the point that it affects the, the, like, lines of arrested growth in the bone or something. Like, you, you'd have really limited data on that kind of thing. Would be interesting to talk about, though. Um, next, we have something from Brian in Georgia. That's oh, books. It's older books. Dear Steve, in 1965 and 1970, when these books came out, they were criticized for being inaccurate. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, one illustration in particular was singled out for showing a Camerasaurus with a mustache. Well, now I gotta... Oh. Yeah, he bookmarked it for us. <laughs> see, that's... It's a, it's a really nice painting. But yeah, why is the Camerasaurus a catfish? That doesn't make any sense. I guess I can't prove that it didn't have, like, some kind of, uh, um, waddle or, uh, what would you call that? That would be a snood. Some kind of caruncular structure on its face, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the... I don't know about the catfish mustache. Um... I was given these books by the illustrator. He was a friend of the family until he insulted my mother and then he was not a friend anymore. Please roast them thoroughly. 
<laughs> okay, I'll, I'll participate in your blood feud. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Hunting Fossils by Martin Keane and... Dinosaurs and More Dinosaurs by... Uh... Gene Craig. Oh, and so the artist is George Sol Solonovich. Okay, okay. Oh, this is a proper wordy book. What's with all this text? Where's the dinosaurs? Oh, well, that's, that's a cat. We got more mammals. Hey, there are some dinosaurs. Was this... The texture is odd here. Was this done in, like, oils? It's kind of cool. It's very wrong. Like, maybe at the time this was kind of state-of-the-art. If this was 70s, you know, having the Tyrannosaurus with its tail off the ground is at least a start, but... Got your... Waterbound sauropod. Classic. Hey, Palaikosaurs. And Grandpa. I'm doing this in exact reverse order. See, that can't be wrong because it's just a fossil. I am a sucker for the old ribbed belly on Tyrannosaurus. I know it's not reasonable anymore, but it just looks nice. See, he was doing good in that other illustration, but on this one, it's dragging his tail again. Oh, and it's got the big iguana-like spikes on the, on the dorsal part of the back there. I think we have a toy that looks like this, but I assumed it was a, a Megalosaurus, whereas this is a Gorgosaurus, allegedly. <laughs> Just hunched over, smelling the air with its tongue, presumably. Does anything in the world smell better than an old book? Wow! Is an ornithomimus looking like a gazelle? Again, like, it's a, it's a good painting. It's just the depiction doesn't make sense. Oh, sorry, I forgot. We're in a feud now. Uh, it's it's awful, and the artist should be ashamed. Well, this Styracosaurus definitely looks like a toy we have. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Brian. This is from... Azan or Azar? In... Colorado. Oh, there's a note. I forgot to say, these are for you to keep. Heart. S signed a, a signature that I can't quite make out. Oh, here we go. There is correspondence. This is from Azar and I Ibis. I really like the tape on the envelope. <laughs> Like, that, that's a really pretty design. Oh! Oh my. Hello, your dinosaurs are wrong. I work in a museum that is locally known for its dinosaur exhibit, and 
gnomes hidden throughout the museum's displays. So, I present to you one of the worst dinosaurs I've ever seen. When I found this terrible dinosaur decoration at a local store, I thought of my museum and your show. You may appreciate how weirdly old-fashioned this beastie is. It made me think of the 1800s illustrations or even something from the Crystal Palace. My favorite beastie is Tanistropheus for their terrible grabby hands and long necks. Uh, oh, I have found one toy and I send it to you because I find it unforgivably ugly. Also, some things from the museum just for funsies. Uh, and a couple of comics I made also for funsies. Signed, Azar and Ilya? Well, thank you so much. So wait, is the is the Tanistrophaeus the the beastie? Or oh oh there's more items. I didn't know wait, was there a Tanistrophaeus in the movies? I keep asking this as if everything that they make a toy of was in the movies. That's They made a valiant effort to have the neck articulate. Yeah, Tanistrophaeus. It's just a just a oddly proportioned little creature. I don't know a ton about it, but like rule of thumb, there must be some problems with how they depicted it here. But I can't say what those are at this time. Let's see here. What? <laughs> okay, so we've got we've got a dinosaur either attacking or being attacked by a bunch of gnomes. That's adorable. <laughs> I'm covered in polystyrene but, that I now can't get off myself. <laughs> It's a little, um, carved stone dimetrodon, I presume. Some, some kind of pelagosaur. Oh, there's more of them. I'm pre that probably either a Dilophosaurus or an Allosaurus. Oh, come on. What you're supposed to be. Oh, uh, maybe a ornithopod of some kind, like maybe a Camptosaurus or something. Or maybe it's a really stylized. It's probably a sauropod, Stephen. Those are cute. I I like the rock on this one. That's a pretty rock. We got a tote bag with, I mean, that's cool that it has a Microraptor. I don't know what the Microraptor is doing in Hell Creek. It must be a time traveler. Uh, yes, Dreadnoughtus, I know. I want a bunch of stickers. The, I, I take it this is the, uh, they must be at the Denver Museum of <laughs> Nature and Science. That's cool. So by process of elimination,
yeah, by process of elimination, is this the beastie? The, the, the one that you found and were like, this is one of the worst depictions he's ever seen? That's gotta be it. Or, or, or was it the Tannis Trophaeus? I guess it could be the Tannis Trophaeus. I'm unsure. Like... I'm sorry if I, if I, if I completely blew past your, your worst depiction because I just didn't, wasn't familiar with the animal. But yeah, thank you so much, Azar and Ilya. That's really cool. Someday I'll make it to the Denver Museum. I have a shirt from there, but I have not been myself. This is from California, but doesn't say from whom. And there's a uh, Spinosaurid of some kind? Oh, it's a Baryonyx. Kind of a nice Baryonyx, but... Oh! There's a letter way at the bottom. Also, those packing peanuts that you can lick and stick together, which I'm not going to do because that's unsanitary, but I could. Dear Stephen and Liz, my name is Ethan and I'm a fan of your shows. I liked dinosaurs when I was a kid and I still like learning about them. I know you evaluate dinosaurs that fans send to you, so I thought I'd send you one too. I hope the both of you are doing well. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your show, Ethan. I, I think we have a Baryonyx, but it's like falling apart. So... This fills a, a gap a little bit. It's pretty nice, though. Yeah. Thank you, Ethan. And the rest is correspondence, looks like. One from Bratcraft Arts in Nevada. Oh. Well, so we have what is obviously a T-Rex, like T-E-A. The, the other two are less obvious to me. Don't... Is that a Dawson Churris? Like Donut Churris? I can't... Pizza, I mean, pizza dactyl, I guess, would be close enough. But, like, the bread is wrong. Like, the, a pterosaur made out of pizza bread wouldn't have additional struts. It would probably use, like, onions or something to be actinofibrils. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be wing fingers made out of crust. I like the olives for eyes, though. Um... Oh, I was overthinking it. It's just... It's just Donosaurus. They wrote the puns for us. I hope you like... I hope you love this as much as I did creating it. Well, thank you, Elise. Open with care. Sent from New Zealand. Oh! We've got a... We've got an origami... Tenontosaurus, maybe? It's got such a long tail. What else has a really long tail? It doesn't have any spikes, so it's probably not Scutellosaurus. How would you do that with origami? I wouldn't even know how to do that with origami. Ask me. Dear Stephen and Liz and Bertrand. 
Long time watcher and fan of your channel. I've been obsessed with dinosaurs for as long as I can remember and, this, and was quite pleased to stumble across some prehistoric media on YouTube that takes science seriously. I love your content and have used many of your videos as source material for my comic series, Ancient Worlds. Hearing the way you talk about dinosaurs when you were a kid reminds me so much of the dinosaurs I grew up with when I first got into them in the late 2000s. Uh, anyway, included in here are two drawings, one of which I shared on Discord a while back, and an origami iguanodon. Oh, I was overthinking it again. Yeah, it, it, okay, origami, iguanodon. That is clearly dated despite being from a book from 2010. Okay, so it was like a, like an origami kit type of a deal. Uh, keep up the good work, signed Flynn. P.S. On the, on the envelope, I drew two views of a theropod vertebra. Oh, is that what that was? I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought they were like nuts. But yeah, th those are, now that I see, it's, it's the anterior and the, po and the lateral view of a theropod vertebrae. And we've got, okay, so this is the, the your dinosaurs are wrong Carnotaurus drawn as a beefy legged sausage, which is what they were. And a pretty nice color scheme on a, on a Spinosaurus, on with little whiskers. Yes, thank you, Flynn. Oh, I missed something. Wait, did I? Oh, the, the theropod vertebrae on the envelope are from his home country of New Zealand, they don't have a lot of dinosaurs down there. I'm surprised you have any. I don't, how old is New Zealand? Like as a, as a landmass? I have no idea. I, for some, I always assumed it was like Iceland where it's too new to have any fossils that old, but apparently not. This is from Rhinosaurus in, oh, he's in Michigan. <laughs> so we haven't done a mailbag since before Christmas. So we're, some of this stuff was supposed to be for Christmas. We've got, uh, what, would, what would a dinosaur Santa Claus be called? You'd have to be, make a pun on claws. So Santa Kyrus. Kyrus's arm, Stephen. Oh, uh, Santa Nikus. There we go. Uh, to Stephen, Liz, and Bertrand. I like that people have started addressing us this way. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. I want to thank you for all your hard work and dedication in creating your dinosaurs are wrong. I've been following the show since, like, episode four or five. Oh, wow, long time viewer. Uh, it is truly a wonderful, inspiring, insightful, creative, and entertaining endeavor. I am proud to be a patron, and I greatly look forward to your future episodes and hangout sessions. Please take care of yourselves, and best wishes for the new year. Uh, P.S. I hope you enjoy my Tricera Claws. Uh, signed, Ryanosaurus. Tricera Claw. yeah, okay. I can see that. Really, he should have two hats. Three hats. There should be, there should be a hat on each of the horns. Uh, and we have a whole stack of artwork from our friend Tyler in Pennsylvania. So I'm just gonna pick some of my favorites uh, inst instead of going through each one. Okay, so here's what we got. We got uh, some stem birds, uh, many of them flighted, but some not. And I really like the choices of colors that he went with. And like Antiornis, obviously we have attested black and red and white coloration, but then like having your Halskoraptor have purple decorations is cool. Like probably iridescent. I don't know how reasonable that is in its environment, but I mean, it looks pretty. We got a whole lot of really bright animals. We got like, uh, I, I, I like the eye spots on the Stegosaurus plates. And a, and a like, Bluebird Dynanicus. Oh, and the classic Parasaurolophus with the, uh, with the, I don't even know what to call that, the, the head neck flap below the horn. 
It's not really a horn, Steven. Well, the crest posterior process. The Giganotosaurus is wrong, I'm sorry. You must have sent this before we did the episode. But it, it, it looks a lot like the color scheme on the, the main one that we used, coincidentally. Or maybe not coincidentally. And I like the Coelophyses, even though I, I don't know... I don't know if they could have had quite that r range. Oh, and, and the, the Agathalmus with the, the striped horns. Again, I don't know, like, by what process stripes on horns happen, but it always looks striking when people restore them that way. We got some, we got some individual variation in a family of Triceratops. That's a cool idea. Some kind of, oh, some kind of pathology happened to that one's horns, I think. Oh, and, and this one. This one is clever. It's a, it's a Mononychus, but it's in the style of, of Owly. That's quite, I, I mean, Mononychus is probably having a moment right now since we're gonna have another season of the Prehistoric Planet, but yeah, deserved. But yeah, thank you, Tyler, and thank you, everyone, for all of this wonderful stuff that you've shared with us. It's always nice to hear from you. It's, it's nice to have animals that we haven't seen before or animals we have seen before not in this particular way but um we'll we'll try and make stuff take care i don't have an outro do we do we say to subscribe and stuff are they are they gonna remember to like and comment if i don't tell them to <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>